Yeah, immensely proud. Uh, uh, you know, to be associated with this club for as long as I have, uh, I've always been proud. But to, to to get this position, to get the opportunity to, to be the head coach here, is something that's not lost on me. Uh, you know, I've had the uh, the great privilege to work with some very good coaches who've coached the club, and I see what it means for them to coach this club. But I think, given you know my emotional connection with the club, that probably amplifies that a little bit more. So yeah, I'm delighted, and you know, I'm immensely proud, and I know that my family are too. Did you see it as a, a natural progression? Yeah, I did. Uh, I mean, when I started coaching, pretty much like when I started playing, I wanted to to, to go as, as far as I could. Uh, and I wanted to coach, uh, be the head coach of this club at, uh, at one point. And at the same time, I understood I understood that there was a, a bit of a journey to go on as a coach. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, working in the junior system with Derek Trainer initially, and then uh, you know, working with the reserves, and then up, up towards the first team, and having those different experiences, I think, was really important. But also, you know, the work I've done with England internationally over the, over the last six or seven years now, you know, has, has, has given me another, you know. Great wealth of experience, really, to to equip me to move into this role. We take over a team that Christian Wolf described as the, the greatest team of the Super League era. That's quite a daunting task, isn't it? It, it can be viewed that way, but it's also a huge privilege. You know, I think there's not many coaches that wouldn't want the opportunity to work with this group of players. Uh, and I can say that as someone who's worked with them myself in a different role. Uh, but I see how hungry they are. I see the... the, the, the the desire that they have for, for success, how hard they work day in, day out. And, you know, I wouldn't be sat here for one second if I didn't think I was taking over a team that still wanted to win, still wanted to achieve great things. And I'm confident that the lads will go about that uh, in the same way that they have done in recent years. Yeah, knowing that group of players uh, gives you that confidence that you can emulate that success, I suppose. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I'm, I'm not coming into this, into the unknown, I suppose, like Christian did a few years ago. I know the group of players, I know what they're about, uh, I know what motivates them and drives them. Uh, uh, I've got a fantastic group around me in terms of the, the, the support staff who have been here a long time as well. So, you know, together we're going to put the, the players in the best position possible to, to continue that success. Just finally for me, can you keep them all together? Can you keep this group as, as hungry as they have been? I think we can. Uh, uh, you know, in, my, in the few conversations that I've had with players since since the end of the season, a lot of them have spoke to me about wanting to win again and wanting to achieve more success. Look at this moment in time, I said to them, I'd much prefer the players that uh, are having time off to be sat on a beach and relaxing and the players that are in a World Cup to really enjoy their experience of being you know, representing their countries, but also being mindful of that you know, when we do come back, uh, there's, a, there's a change in focus because... We want to continue the success that's been had at this club in, in recent years. Good luck. Thank you very much. You talked in the in the in the notes that, that, that there's a thirst for more. But the challenge year on year does get tougher. How much tougher is it going to be for you now that Christian's not there? Yeah, well, I mean, it's going to be, it's certainly going to be tougher, uh, for, for not just for me, but for everybody within the organisation, uh, because our competitors, our closest rivals, they continue to strive to improve and get better. And I suppose sometimes that that, that striving, stri striving for improvement is easier when you're not winning, because you, you, you know you have a real thirst for success. And sometimes what can happen when you when you do win and win a lot is that complacency can set in. So as long as we're aware of that as an organisation, then we continue to try and find those improvements. And I certainly believe that we do have improvements in us as a team. We've overcome some great challenges this year in terms of certainly with injuries and loss of personnel. I think you know having players back will certainly improve them. But we've got to be be prepared as an organisation, uh, not just myself as a coach, but the support staff, the players that you know, we want to get better. It's not just continue, even though you've had four years of great success. You can't just say. Carry on, carry on regardless. No, uh, certainly not. I think uh, you know, there's a saying that you, you know, if you, you know, you stand still, you know, people will go past you. And uh, you know, where we're at at the moment as a club is we're in a fantastic position. Uh, you know, I'm immensely proud of what what the groups have achieved and you know what Christian did while whilst he was here. But at the same time, you know, I see that we can get better. I can see that uh, there's a group of players who, who think we can get better. 
And I think that that's what really excites me about you know taking up this opportunity is that you know to work work with a group of a group of players, sorry, who are, who are determined to improve is is fantastic for me. Challenge for you. Being a number two is one thing. You've had great success yeah. at number two. You've been with England. How do you see the challenge for you now? How do you improve or take the challenge forward for yourself at this different level? Oh look, I. I I believe we at the club, you know, it's about you know, setting standards, uh, and I'm the person to set those standards uh, first and foremost. Uh, but we do have high standards here already at the club, uh, and I know that. So it's about not just me. For, it's about me working with with the support staff, working with the players, uh, understanding that you know we do need to get better, we do need to improve. Uh, you know there are going to be difficulties along the way, and you know the challenges that I face. You know, particularly being a, a local local lad in the town, you know, living on the doorstep. Uh, you know, I'm going to be faced with with, with you know, a lot of challenges, but it's something that I fought I fought long and hard about. Uh, it's not a reason not to take up this great opportunity. In fact, you know, I see I view it as the opposite. Uh, I've always had a fantastic support in and around the town. Uh, you know, when I was playing, when I've been coaching, and I don't, I don't see that changing at all. And uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, working with not just the team, with the town, the supporters, the community to, to help this club grow. Okay, you, you're coming with the, you've got some quite senior generals there on board already. How important are they for a, a young coach like yourself? Yeah, I think you know, crucial. You know, I think. You know, when James Roby decided that he was going to play on another year, uh, you know, I was, I was I was delighted because I, th I think me stepping into this head coach role, having someone there like Rhodes as, as the team leader, is is, is going to help my help me uh, settle into that role a lot quicker. But not just James. There's you know players that have been here a long time, the likes of Johnny Lomax, Alex Wormsley, you know, even Tommy Makinson, Mark Percival, those types of players. You know, they understand what the club's about as well. I, I've played with a number of those those guys uh, also. Uh, so yeah, so having that that closer connection with the playing group, uh, I think will help. Will certainly help me. You you you, you inherit a team that's built its sort of reputation on steely defence and a will to win, but the attack this year has probably been sort of limited due to Lewis Dodd and Will Ogbuati and Mark Burst with a lot of players injured. Does it excite you what you can actually do with the centre attack? Yeah, it does. Uh, and you know, obviously, uh, you know, Lauren Fresenu coming in. Uh, as an assistant coach here, you know one of the, the tasks he'll be char uh, charged with is, is to look where he can develop our attack. Uh, I, I think we have got improvements there. Uh, we have been hampered a lot this year. You mentioned you know the loss of Lewis Dodd, which which uh, which certainly hurt, hurt the way we attack. And you know when you lose a player of that calibre, it's always going to do do so. But you know we have got improvements in us. Uh, I, I've mentioned a lot how we're a team that. Uh, uh, have a lot of very strong ball carriers, which works to our advantage uh, a lot of the time. But then sometimes you do need a plan B, a plan B, so to speak. And you know, Lauren will come in with some fresh ideas there, which will I think can help evolve our, our our performances in that respect. Is that an absolute necessity, given the fact that other coaches will be working on how players work? I think so. Yeah, you, you know, when I've listened to other coaches speak about this team and this group play, group of players, they, they quite often refer to us as the, the benchmark. So they will be probably looking at us more so than any, any other club, at, you know, of where they need to be and the level that they need to get to. So it's up to us to stay ahead of that, but certainly they'll be looking at how, how they can stop this and tell inside. So us having different ways of, of doing things uh, may just help us stay ahead of the pack. People always value your honesty and people would probably know that you won't be taking this job if you didn't think you were ready for it. No, certainly not. Uh, look, no, it's what I've always wanted to do in terms of when I got involved with coaching, it was being a head coach. Uh, but like I said earlier, I understood, understood there was a process that I needed to go through to, to you know, equip me with the right tools to be able to be successful. But now I feel I'm there. Uh, you know, there was a time a few months ago where Christian was deciding whether he was going to stay on or not. and. Had Christian stayed on, I'd, I'd, I would have stayed as an, assist, an assistant with him for another year or so. But I certainly started to get that itch where the head coaching position position was one that I wanted to take up. So uh, it was important for me that you know once the opportunity came up, uh, I made it quite clear to, to Mike and, and Amy that it, it was something that I wanted to do. 
And then obviously discussions progressed and I've been given this great opportunity and I know I'm really thankful. Your family bleeds red and white, they must be super proud today. I would say so. Uh, you know, we're a, we're a family who don't really say a lot to each other, but you know, a lot of my family are huge Saints fans. Go to a lot of the games, both home and away. And uh, you know, I know they were as immensely proud when I got the opportunity to rep represent this club as a player. But I think you know, to sit in this this chair today as, as head coach of, of St Helens, uh, you know, they'll be immensely proud. And uh, you know, I've had fantastic support off them throughout my career, both as a player and a coach. And uh, I'm sure that'll continue. What was it about Laurent Paul that made him the ideal fit for your staff? Uh, when I thought about bringing in an assistant coach, uh, there was a few things that I wanted really. And uh, one was uh, I, I wanted someone who's had a head coach experience. I, I haven't, and obviously Laurent's had experience of that at Catalan uh, with varying degrees of, su of success. Uh, He's someone that is really passionate about rugby. Uh, when, I, when I sat down and, and, and spoke with him, the first thing that struck me about him was his passion for rugby league and uh, how knowledgeable he was uh, about the game, which uh, you know I found really impressive. Uh, and the third thing was, uh, you know, what I was conscious of that I've been promoted from within, and we've got a lot of. Uh, Staff within the club, uh, head of performance, uh, Matt Daniels, head of uh, medical, Nathan Mill, I can go to Ian Talbot. Uh, uh, you know, we've got a lot of staff that have been here a very, very long time. So I think, you know, with a playing group that's been together a long time as well, a fresh pair of eyes, a fresh voice, someone to look at things just slightly different, maybe just what the group needs. And I think Lauren will bring bring those things in. As you say, the group's been together a long time. It's, it's very tight and there's always been very minimal recruitment. Do you envisage your squad for next year's complete, or is there room to act on that? Uh, I mean, there is room. Obviously, you know, Regan Grace decided to move to uh, to uh, rugby union in the midway through the year, and it's a big loss for us, Regan, because he's a fantastic bloke and obviously a fantastic player as well. Uh, but yeah, there is room to do something there. We have got salary cap space to 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 add, but. At the same time, we want to be very diligent in the way we go about things and we don't just bring a player to this club just for, for, for the sake of it. They have to be the right fit and by the right fit, I mean not only a very good player but a very good person as well. Uh, so we'll continue to scour the market, so to speak, and see what's out there and have discussions where they need to be had. Uh, if we have to go into next season with what we've got, I'm comfortable. You know, I reference John Benison as a, as a player who's done a wonderful job this year and I'd be certainly happy putting him in that position and letting him play. But at the same time, if something comes available that does suit, we're in a position to do something. What happens for yourself between now and the start of pre-season? Do you afford yourself a break or is it work starts now? Yeah, that's the plan. I mean, we spent, uh, you know, myself and the staff uh, last week or so looking at looking at pre-season and, and how that will look for us. And we'll do that for another week. And I do have a holiday, but with a family, I think that that's really, what? really important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean... Uh, the, probably the the, the, un, the un, unfortunate part of this for myself is that obviously I've been involved with England for for a number of years now and was really excited about the opportunity of being involved in a World Cup. But I think what what the most important thing is is that I'm committing to this role and committing to it wholeheartedly, 100%. So uh, I've been in dialogue with Sean Wayne about the possibility of this happening. Uh, he's been really really good, uh, very understanding of the situation. Obviously, someone who's coached his hometown team and understands the pressures that that bring. I can't thank him, thank him enough really for his support in, in allowing me to take up this opportunity and not be with him in the World Cup. It's I'm going to miss not being involved. However, I, I feel it was the right decision. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, I will get a break with the family. Um, it's one I'm looking forward to. We recharge the batteries because the second I step off the plane when I get back, uh, we're straight into work. Do you think there's been somewhat a, a bit of a revival for, for British coaches, Paul? Obviously, we've seen Matty uh, at Wigan in recent years. Mark, Mark's just taken charge at Wakefield and, and now yourself. Do you think the British the, the clubs are putting more faith in, in the British coaches now? Yeah, I, th I, I, I think that's the case. I think if you look at you know some the sex, success sorry that someone like Ian Watson's had as well and, and Paul Rowley, I think people are going more more confident to a, to a point. Uh, English coaches or British coaches and... Uh, you know, long may that continue. I think you know, you know. Sometimes, you know, we can do ourselves a disservice in this country, uh, uh, thinking we're not quite where we need to be in terms of the levels of coaches that we have. Uh, you know, the the work that I've done over the years in terms of with England, and I see someone like, for example, Andy Last. How you know, working with England, how good of a coach Andy Last is. So. Uh, We've got you know a wealth of talent in terms of the coaching ranks within within this country, and 
uh, I think you know it's something that we should champion as a sport. Yeah, and, and just on the World Cup challenge, Ivan Clear has is, is come out and said that the Perth Panthers want to play St Helens next year. Will you be in, in dialogue then? Maybe after your holiday when you get off the foot? Yeah, I think I think the, the you know the club are currently in discussions of you know a World Cup challenge and how how that may look. You know, certainly from a coach's perspective and a player's perspective, without getting involved in the financial side of things, it'd be a fantastic opportunity to, to take on a, a you know a Penrith team that have won two NRL competitions. And you know, I watched their game on Sunday, and you know they they played fantastic. You know what a team they are. Uh, but I think you know what this team's done not only uh, last year but in the years previous, they've earned an opportunity to, to take on that challenge and. Uh, you know, we, we'd love as a club to put ourselves in a position where we'd be able to do that. A bit of sentiment today, Paul, as well. You getting your first head coach role here at St Helens, and your old mate Sean Long's just got his at, at Featherstone as well. Yeah, I'm delighted for Sean. I know, obviously, I've worked with Sean uh, for a number of years, both as a player and a coach, and uh, he's he's someone who's like myself has, has wanted to take a, a head coaching opportunity and obviously that's come his, his way now with Featherstone. It's a club that he's had a brief experience coaching with in, in the past so he knows a little bit about the place himself and I'm sure he'll do a fantastic job and uh, you know, I'm, I'm so looking forward to see how, how Featherstone go under him because you know he's a fantastic, uh, fantastic coach and I'm sure he'll get them, certainly get them playing some attractive rugby.